This week, I've got to talk to you with my captain hat on, and I am genuinely really angry. Good one, Delta Lima, descend up to 4,000 feet, speed 180 knots. 4,000 feet, uh, speed uh, 180 knots. On the 5th of May 2019, footage of an ill-fated Aeroflot Superjet 100 landing at Moscow surfaced online. I'll link to it below if you don't want to watch it because it is distressing. I'll just explain that it is an example of a landing that's gone wrong and an aircraft is sub subsequently engulfed in flames and is a, in a completely catastrophic situation. First and foremost, I'm not going to talk about the technical side of the accident. I'm not going to talk about the human factors or any potential errors that have been uh, taken by the flight crew because I've never flown a Sukhoi 100 and I wasn't there and I haven't seen the report. I think everyone that's ever worked for an airline and those people that continue to work for airlines will always be interested in looking at an accident to see what has happened. But beyond the actual technicalities of the accident, one story that stood out to me was the fact that one of the cabin crew literally had to manhandle passengers to get them off the aircraft. It turns out Aeroflot uh, cabin crew member Tatiana Kazatkina, I hope I've said her name right because it sounds like she's a bit of a hero, she literally had to grab people by the collar and throw them out of the door onto the escape slide because people are taking their luggage with them and getting in the way. And it's so infuriating as someone that works in the industry. You see, the thing I am most afraid to have to say on an aircraft is, this is the captain, this is an emergency, evacuate, evacuate. Because declaring a pan, saying pan, pan, shows that you need, uh, you're in a state of urgency, that you do need help from air traffic control. Declaring a mayday is just a formal way of saying we are going to ignore and abandon all of the laws in aviation to ensure that we limit the risk of harm and damage to persons and property. Neither one of those are a big deal. I've said both of them multiple times for multiple reasons. But making the decision to evacuate the aircraft instantly guarantees that at least one person is gonna get injured, possibly seriously injured. And ultimately, in a circumstance like the uh, Aeroflot aircraft, you know that there is a very good chance that people will die on your aircraft. And that's terrifying. So the decision to evacuate is never taken lightly. In fact, when we do the evacuation checklist, we call for it first, we run through the items, and the very last item is evacuation, if required, initiate. And we always pause before that last item, even if we've done everything else in the checklist, normally we do a checklist from top to bottom, we pause at this last item to confirm that we still want to evacuate, to confirm we still want to take the risks of injuring people and to confirm that we still have an emergency. It's not a decision that's taken lightly. And when you hear that command, you should hear a strong, calm command to evacuate. But what you should be hearing is get off this aircraft, otherwise there is a good chance someone is going to die. And I cannot begin to tell you how angry it makes me when I see an emergency on an aircraft and people are filming the evacuation, which I understand them doing. It's in the age of social media, in the age of YouTube, I understand you filming that. Not a problem because having your phone out filming doesn't slow you down. But what really gets my goat, what really grinds my gears is seeing people between the person filming the evacuation and the emergency exit up in the overhead lockers, getting bags down, getting their stuff together to get off. This is absolutely ridiculous. When a new aircraft type is certified, it's treated by the FAA and EASA and all the other authorities to an evacuation test. What that is, is they fill the aircraft with uh, volunteers, they then do the command to evacuate, and you have to evacuate the aircraft within 90 seconds through 50% of the exits. They don't tell the um, cabin crew which exits will open and which won't, they just disable, uh, I was gonna say four, depending on how many doors you have, they disable 50% of the exit. So quite simply, if people fanny about getting their luggage out, they increase the chance of somebody else being killed on that aircraft. It's as simple as that. And I've seen and read arguments before that people have very important things in their luggage. I get that. But if it's that important to you, if you have something that is so important, why are you putting it four feet above your head out of sight that anyone could help themselves to when you fall asleep on the flight? If you need your documents, if you need your phone or your iPad or your laptop and you're terrified to leave without it, put it in the seat back pocket, put your passport in your pocket so that you have it in an emergency. Don't go up and get your luggage down and risk killing someone else. Let's talk about the cabin crew for a moment. The cabin crew in an emergency reminds me of the Jim Jeffries skit about gun control, where he's talking about, I think it's Colin, who's meant to be the armed guard at a school. And he talks about how Colin is paid $15 an hour and doesn't have much wiggle room to be a hero. Remember that. Remember that cabin crew are paid very poorly, generally. But despite how poorly they're paid every single time there is an emergency, 99% of those cabin crew will rise to the challenge. They will be there to help save your life and save the life of everyone around you. 
So how about you have some respect for their sacrifice? They've not run off and been the first one down the slide. They're stood there trying to help you and help your family and your friends that you're traveling with. Leave your Louis Vuitton case behind. That can be replaced. So what do the pilots do while the cabin crew are physically removing luggage from passengers and throwing them or tossing them overboard? Once the evacuation is initiated, it's not unusual for the first officer to be one of the first people to evacuate. They have to leave through the first usable exit, including the windows in the flight deck on some aircraft, at which point it becomes very lonely in the flight deck. The captain remains in the flight deck until they're fairly sure the cabin is clear, at which point the captain has to go out and check every single row, looking for people who have been overcome by smoke, that have overcome by fear, that are trapped in the wreckage, and pull every person that they find to the door and push them down the slide. It's a job made far harder if some selfish git has prioritized their fashionable luggage over the value of genuine human life. At my first airline, it was normal to brief exactly what you would take with you during an evacuation. So once you finish the checklist, you would pick up your mobile phone, your passport, your high-vis jacket, and the first officer would take the uh, documents for the flight so that they can be presented to law enforcement when they arrive. But all of these items sit so close, they're just outboard of each pilot in your bag because ultimately you don't know how long you're gonna have until the aircraft is completely overcome by flames in an emergency, especially if you look how quickly the Aeroflot aircraft was just engulfed in fire. It's it is terrifying. Now I understand that I've flown for 12 plus years, done thousands of sectors, thousands of hours, hundreds if not thousands of emergency briefings. And I understand that for me, my focus on an emergency is probably more refined than yours. If you're not a pilot, if you are a pilot, I apologize. And I also understand that an emergency on an aircraft is incredibly unlikely. So you've probably never given it much thought. The cabin crew aren't being mean when they tell you to evacuate and leave all your belongings behind. They are trying to save your life and prevent you killing someone that's behind you in the queue. Now I understand this video has been a little bit ranty and I understand it's not the career ending opportunities content that is usual, but this is something that gets me every time and I finally wanted to make a video about it to say how infuriating it is. I wish you very safe travels wherever you're going. I hope that you never ever have to even consider the emergency equipment of the aircraft and you never have to follow those emergency commands in the cabin crew. I really hope that never happens to you. But if it does, please follow them, please listen, please use some common sense and leave your baggage behind. I've been Simon Now. This has been Career Ending Opportunities, off on a tangent. I'll see you again soon, bye-bye.